Good afternoon and welcome back to 120s. Today we are doing a film test. Specifically, we're going to put through its paces Lomography Berlin 400 ISO and see how that performs. Um, generally positive reviews online, uh, but the best thing that we can do is head out and give it a go. So let's go and take some photos. Uh, okay, so we're out and about uh, with the lovely Beck. Say hello, Beck. Hello. <laughs> uh, Beck is going to sit very still while I take a photograph today, which is very kind of you. Thank you very much. Uh, we have got two rolls of Lomography Berlin loaded. We've got one in the Bronica S2A, one in the Bronica ETRS. And as we did with the Lady Grey, uh, I've got a kind of a control in the Rollerflex SLX. That one today is a roll of Tri-X 400, Kodak Tri-X 400. As I just said to you, Beck, it's a little, um, it's a little brighter than I was hoping for. So be it, sunny it is. So I think let's start with, um, let's just start shooting. I think I'm going to put the 200mm lens on the Bronica ETRS. I'm going to keep the 75 on the S2A. Uh, I've only got the one lens for the SLX, so I can't change that. Um, and we'll do some, we'll just keep switching between them. All right, so let's shoot a little bit towards the sun. So let's have you standing on this bench to start with. It's quite nice, actually. I could do with being taller as a person, <laughs> but you can hop down for a minute, actually, if you like. <laughs> yeah, we can swap shoes. <laughs> Nothing weird about this shoot. Yeah. Oh, it's a lovely smile. Holding it there. Okay. It's a good start. Uh, you have to bring your chin down a little bit because I am a little bit shorter, I'm afraid. Uh, holding there. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm going to jump in at this stage of this video. I would usually show you these photos as I take them. However, I do need to insert a caveat. I developed these films uh, and they came out looking like this. Uh, just for comparison, the uh, Kodak Tri-X that I had in the uh, Rollerflex SLX Mark II looks like that. So you see the difference. Now, let me just show you with the light behind it, because there are images there, but with the film base being so dark, um, they are going to be indistinct. There is going to be a loss of contrast and there is going to be a lot of grain because in the scanning, scanning process, I'm having to work so hard to bring these images out that we're, we're getting a lot of grain with it. I am going to show you the rest of the shoot with Beck now uh, because I did get some nice images out of it. Um, We'll have a chat afterwards about what this could be. One thing that I know is that it's not that it's it's not incomplete fixing. Because the first thing I did as soon as I saw these films was I cut a chunk off. I cut a chunk off the leader and I put it back in a really strong solution of fixer and left it in there for 10 minutes and there was no change. That that base uh, film looked exactly the same. It's possible that it's supposed to look something like this. I'm not too sure. Uh, let's have a quick run through of the remaining shots that we got from that film, but just know that they are lacking in detail and they are very grainy. And that is because of this. All right, then let's try and do some more interesting stuff. Do you want to hop up on that bench for me? And arms out a bit wider if you can. Oh, lovely. Okay, and can we do one of those with a, with a leg movement? Yeah, three. Right, at ease there for a minute. Let's swap cameras. So this is quite nice. It's a very long lens. Um, so we've got, it's got kind of a head and shoulders of Beck there, in which she looks lovely, which is great. Okay, and then we've got five, six, one, two, five, which is what we said, wasn't it? All right, and uh, squat, please. Nice. Get a little bit closer, I think. Too close. There. Oi. Three, two, one. Oh, I'll tell you what we'll do actually. No, let's move on to the, um, let's move on to S2A. Uh, are, you, are you comfortable sitting there? Yeah. Right, hold still there for a minute then. I'm gonna get back to stand on this bench here. And I'm gonna let, oh, actually this is a bit better. So we've got the sun is just drifting behind some clouds. So we're gonna do, so I'm gonna shoot fairly low down. 
Okay, and then I'm looking for, uh, yeah, sure, why not? Let's try some stuff. Here we go, beautiful. Hold it there, please. Three, two, one. Okay, we'll do one a bit further away. Hands on hips, maybe. I think that sun is too close. Uh, three, two, one. Lovely. Um, okay, so we're starting to lose a bit of light, which is a good thing. Oh, there's rain. Are you feeling it? Here it comes. Yes, I can do my umbrella shots. Here is an umbrella. Specially bought just for you. You can keep that one. Right, so I want a much shorter depth of field here. We're going to take it down to 2.8. Nice. Right then. Go on then, up on the bench. You knew it was coming. <laughs> Lovely. And throw the pose. Oh, it's beautiful. There should be some fun ones in there. That is the end of the Berlin in the ETRS. So we'll pack this camera away now. Um, finish off the roll in the S2A and in the uh, roller flex. All right, so we're back onto the S2A. S2A is on the tripod. All right, holding one more second. Apologies, taking a little bit longer. Gonna lose you to the wind. Here it comes. Hey! <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's try one more of the same. I'm a bit further away now. So if you stay where you are, don't get too much closer to me. Um, and, tell you what we, oh God, we'll have one of those. Lovely, thank you. So that's the end of the Lomography Berlin. Uh, uh, 12 frames in the S2A, 16 frames through the ETRS. I'm just gonna finish off the Tri-X that is in the SLX. Uh, we'll do that handheld rattle that out and then we're all done for the day and i'll say a big thank you to you Beck. so hang on hold there for a minute three two one lovely thank you very much and holding 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 three two one lovely uh so we're all done Beck. thank you so much if you're a superstar i will put the link to Beck's purple port down below uh, it's available for modeling I believe, as a part of your, yeah, in your, in your spare time. Um, you've done a great job, thank you very much, really appreciate it. Really fun day. <laughs> All right, so some nice shots in there. As I said, very grainy, but let's take this one, for example, this lovely close-up face shot of uh, Beck. Uh, I, mean, I quite like the grain. I don't know if it's supposed to look like that, um, if that is what is intended of this uh, film stock, but it's nice, it's a, it's a nice photo. Um, I would not expect that much grain from a 400 ISO film. And you can see it side by side. They're both 400 ISO films. Uh, and the difference in grain is just wild. So um, I have ordered, I've, in fact, I've ordered another roll of Berlin. It has arrived. Uh, I'm gonna head out with Beck and uh, let's do the shoot again and see if we can get any better results. All right, I'll see you out there. Right then, we're out again. I've dragged the wonderful Beck back out again. She's agreed to um, be patient with me while I test this film again and see if I can make it work this time. So we'll just take some snaps around here. I just want to rattle these off. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Um, and this time, because I don't think the mistake was not in the taking of the photographs last time. I'm pretty sure it was in the developing of the photographs. So uh, we'll just get some more photos on the new roll that I've bought. Um, and I'll, I'll see what I can do with the development. I'll try a different developer with it. And hopefully it'll come out a bit different. So we we'll just start here. Here we go. And holding. I'm going to dive in and interrupt again there so that I can show you what the negatives look like this time. Same as last time. Here is uh, session one, session two. This time they were developed in Ilfosol 3, Ilford Ilfosol 3. Here we have negatives from the first session. And here is negatives from the second session. We get them lined up side by side. You can see there is a little bit more contrast uh, in the second lot. So the Ilfo Sol definitely gives you a bit more contrast with the uh, Lomography Berlin. But I think we can safely conclude that that is what it's supposed to look like. So with all that cleared up, I'll show you the rest of the shoot.
Let's do exactly the same. Let's just turn around so we're facing slightly more into the sun. Turn back to me, please. Lovely. Holding nice and still for me. Three, two, one. The lens flare. Right, so we've got 2.8, 500. A little bit of lens flare again holding. Here it comes, three, two, one. Do you want to sit on the steps here for a minute? Super, thank you. And I've got my shadow in it. We'll do what we can to avoid that. Okay, let's take this up back up to 500. Try it like that. Right then, super quick shoots, uh, but hopefully, I did. I mixed up some of the exposures there. Um, hopefully we've got something that will actually work and I'll try some different developing and we'll see what comes out this time. Beck, thank you very much. Again, thank you. I will put a link to your purple port down below if anybody needs a model in the Bristol area, highly recommended. <laughs> All right, we are back. I've developed everything, I've shown you everything. So what did we think? First things first, we should talk about this this word here which says kino k-i-n-o and that is a reference to in theory this film stock's origins either origins as a, a film motion picture film stock or the intent for it to to be similar to a motion picture film stock now i know that motion picture film stocks traditionally had quite dark bases um, in order to reduce glare and, and halation or reflections from behind the film plane back through the, uh, through the film. Um, I don't know what the answer is there, whether that is a thing. Whether motion picture film stocks were traditionally low contrast, high grain, I, it doesn't seem to uh, ring true necessarily. We definitely, the, the lack of contrast definitely causes some of the grain so you essentially you're having to work the image so hard um, to to get anything out of it that it's it's exacerbating all the grain and the grain becomes very visible i really wanted to take these out and and try and do some prints from them and see how they come out in a print process and and out in the darkroom Unfortunately, uh, over here in the UK at the moment, we're going through an extremely cold spell and uh, my darkroom is an ice cube. Um, I can't get any, any running water out there because I use my hose pipe to, to get running water to my darkroom. And my hose pipe is um, solid at the moment. So I can't take them out and do any prints. I am going to, well, I th one thing I really wanted to do was take both the Berlin and the last film that we tested, the uh, Lady Grey, the Lomography Lady Grey 400. I wanted to take that out into the darkroom as well and do some prints from that. So I will do that in a video coming soon. Um, I will take both film stocks out and do some darkroom printing from those film stocks so that we can see exactly how they look under those conditions. One thing that we were losing in amongst all the grain was fine detail. So tight close-ups of Beck's face are actually really nice. I think they look great with the grain because we're not hoping for, or rather I'm not hoping for, uh, extreme fine detail in order to enjoy the image. I felt that when Beck was further away, the grain kind of prevented you from, from getting a really close sense of what we're looking at. And that's a problem for me. So um, I definitely like this one less than I like the Lady Grey. Interestingly, Kodak Tri-X is a favorite film stock for me. Uh, and what I do like is its um, sharpness and, and lack of grain. But you put it side by side, uh, with the grainy Lomography Berlin. And all of a sudden, it's almost as if it has too little grain. It looks almost waxy. But then, I think that's kind of the point, is that the more you look at the grainy images, the more you like the grainy images. Uh, the more you look at the non-grain images, the worse the grainy images start to seem. It's well established that grain is not a bad thing. Uh, I think that modern digital photography has kind of taught us to believe that any grain in an image is a bad thing because of course digital cameras and digital sensors when they introduce gain into an image or high ISO 
um, can start to look grainy as well. It's a very different type of grain. It's a digital grain and it's, it tends to be a bit of a multicolored grain. Um, and it's not this kind of organic analog grain that we're seeing here. But the thought process is grain equals bad. And of course that doesn't have to be the case. And I'm guilty very much of, of allowing my brain to go in that direction um, of thinking that one must always strive for no grain. But I think certainly the close-ups of Beck show us that grain, an amount of grain, can be a good thing. It can definitely add to an image. So, Lomography Berlin 400. It's grainy and it's rough, but it's a look. And if it's a look that you're going for, then here it is. Anyway, lots to think about, which has got to be a good thing, right? That's good that this has left us, you know, with, with stuff to ponder uh, and in a thoughtful mood. Um, but that is it for my uh, discussion of Lomography Berlin. Very soon I will be heading out to the darkroom and doing some darkroom prints from both the Berlin and the Lady Grey. I'll put that out in one video, I'll, you know, Lomography Lady Grey in Berlin, darkroom printing, um, to see what that grain looks like. Because I'm always conscious of the fact that uh, in amongst that analog grain in that image is also digital grain. It's, it, the, there is digital noise in there somewhere as well. So what I really want to see is, I wanna take this through the full analog process, start to finish, and come out with a fully analog print in which all grain will be organic. Um, and I think that'll be quite an interesting exercise for me to go through. So that will be coming up very soon. Also waiting for my darkroom to stop being an ice cube are a load of uh, sheets ready for black and white paper reversal. I took them out, I did a load of tests on them, um, tried some filters, tried a few different things. I've got some darkroom techniques that I wanna tweak and change and test. So that's coming up very soon. Uh, we've also got Mamiya RB67, uh, Fuji GX680, One Lens Wednesday is gonna be starting, wildlife on analog film. So much coming up, loads of exciting stuff. So watch out for those. If you're not currently subscribed, please do like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Lomography Berlin. Are you gonna be rushing out to buy it or are you more keen on Lady Grey or some totally other film stocks? Let me know your thoughts and I'll see you next time, bye.